A submersible named Titan suddenly lost contact with its support ship off the coast of Newfoundland in the North Atlantic Ocean, near the wreck of the historical ship Titanic that had sunk into the sea over a 100 years ago. A large-scale search and rescue operation was conducted using aircraft, ships, and robot vehicles. Everyone had the same question, what happened to the passengers? Before delving further into the case of the Titan submersible, let us briefly understand the history of the Titanic, which motivated such dives. The Titanic was built using the best technology of the time including two giant steam engines that provided 46,000 horsepower. It took over two years and 15,000 workers to build the Titanic. When the Titanic left England, it was the largest ship in the world. It was 882 feet long, 104 feet tall, and had 10 decks. It was so large and well-built that it was touted as being unsinkable. The Titanic departed from Southampton, England on April 10, 1912. It then stopped at the French port of Cherbourg and the Irish port of Queenstown to pick up more passengers. It left Queenstown and began its fateful trip across the Atlantic Ocean towards New York on April 11, 1912. The Titanic hit the iceberg and sank to the depth of 12,500 feet at 2.20 a.m. on April 15, 1912. While over 700 people did survive, more than 1,500 died. The captain of the Titanic was Edward John Smith. He stayed on board and went down with the ship. The monument to Captain Edward John Smith currently stands in Beacon Park in Lichfield, England. The Titanic sank in 1912, but its wreckage was only found on the ocean floor in 1985. Scientists believe that the entire shipwreck could vanish by 2030 due to bacteria that are eating away at the metal. As the window of opportunity to see the actual wreckage closes, the American company OceanGate offers trips to the wreck. Founded in 2009, OceanGate completed its first submersible dive to the Titanic. Now, let us understand the difference between a submarine and a submersible. A submarine is self-sufficient, meaning it has the power to leave port and return on its own. On the other hand, a submersible requires a support ship or mother ship for both return and support, as well as communication. In the case of the Titan, the Polar Prince was the support ship that towed the submersible to the North Atlantic area, where it conducted its dive. The company owns three submersibles, namely the Cyclops I, Antipodes, and Titan. Designed to carry up to five people to a depth of 13,120 feet or 4,000 meters, the Titan is 22 feet long, 9.2 feet wide, 8.3 feet high, and weighs 23,000 pounds and can carry up to 1,510 pounds. It was made from a carbon fiber cylinder, so the walls are curved. There were two vertical thrusters and two horizontal thrusters, one on each side. It can reach speeds of up to three knots. The rear section is unmanned and contains oxygen tanks and electronics. The front section, near the viewport, features a toilet hidden by a curtain when in use. Passengers will have to sit on the floor, as there are no seats provided. The front section of the craft also serves as the entry and exit point for passengers. The pilot uses a video game controller to steer the craft. Before the June 18th dive, the Titan has been to the Titanic wreckage only twice. There were five people on board the Titan submersible namely, Stockton Rush, Paul-Henri Nargillette, Hamish Harding, Shahzada Dawood, and Suleiman Dawood. Stockton Rush, the founder and chief executive of OceanGate Expeditions, was piloting this vessel. Paul-Henri Nargillette, a French maritime expert, had been on more than 35 dives to the Titanic wreck site. 
Serving as the Director of Underwater Research for RMS Titanic Incorporated, an American company that owns the salvage rights to the famous wreck and displays many of the artifacts in Titanic exhibitions, Nargillette played a crucial role in exploring and documenting the site. Hamish Harding, a British aviation tycoon who holds three Guinness World Records, including one for the longest time spent traversing the deepest part of the ocean on a single dive, had a history of thrill-seeking adventures. Serving as the chairman of Action Aviation, a sales and air operations company based in Dubai, Harding had previously flown to space on a mission by Jeff Bezos's Blue Origin Rocket Company. Shahzada Dawood, a prominent Pakistani businessman, was the vice chairman of the Karachi-headquartered conglomerate Engro. His family is known as one of the wealthiest business families in the country. He also brought along his son, Suleiman Dawood, for this trip. They were each other's greatest supporters and cherished a shared passion for adventure and the exploration of all the world had to offer them. Each person in the submersible had spent $250,000 for just a few hours on this tour. The trip was expensive because the wreck of the Titanic is hidden deep in the sea, specifically at a depth of 12,500 feet below the surface. OceanGate required Titan passengers to sign a waiver that mentioned death numerous times. The release of liability agreement lists various ways in which passengers on a trip to the Titanic could die. These include being subjected to extreme pressure or any other failure of the sub, unpredictable conditions such as oceanic or atmospheric factors, and potential risks associated with boarding small vessels and other equipment. The waiver also covers other potential risks of death, such as exposure to high-pressure gases, pure oxygen servicing, and high-voltage electrical systems, as stated in the document. The Polar Prince, a Canadian icebreaker ship, set off from St. John's, Newfoundland, Canada, on Friday, June 16, towing the experimental Titan submersible and carrying the five-man team destined to explore the iconic ocean liner's watery gravesite. On Saturday evening, June 17, British billionaire and adventurer Hamish Harding, one of those aboard the submersible, posted on Facebook, due to the worst winter in Newfoundland in 40 years, this mission is likely to be the first and only manned mission to the Titanic in 2023. A weather window has just opened up, and we are going to attempt a dive tomorrow. On June 18, at 12 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, the submersible began what was expected to be a two-hour descent to the Titanic wreck, 12,500 feet down, according to the U.S. Coast Guard. Let's get a sense of how deep 12,500 feet is. The height of the Statue of Liberty is 305 feet. It would take approximately the height of 41 Statue of Liberties to reach the Titanic wreck. At 1.45 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, communication between the submersible and the surface vessel is lost. This occurs one hour and 45 minutes after the start of its descent, according to the U.S. Coast Guard. Experts estimate the Titan submersible lost contact with the surface when it was about 11,480 foot down. At 9.40 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, the Coast Guard receives a report about an overdue submersible from the Canadian research vessel Polar Prince. The U.S. Coast Guard collaborated with Canadian authorities and commercial vessels to search for the Titan. A remotely operated vehicle, or ROV, from the Canadian vessel Horizon Arctic searched the seafloor, while a French vessel deployed its ROV at the site. Fragments of the vessel were detected on the ocean floor near the Titanic. This discovery led the U.S. Coast Guard to announce that the ship had suffered a catastrophic implosion, resulting in the tragic death of all five passengers aboard. Let us discuss what an implosion is. Unlike an explosion, which expands the volume outwards, implosion is a process in which objects are destroyed by collapsing or being squeezed in on themselves. The typical pressure at sea level is 14.7 psi. As you descend deeper, this pressure increases due to the weight of the water above. 
Roughly, for every 33 feet you descend, the pressure increases by approximately 14.7 psi. The pressure at the site of the Titanic wreck is about 5,800 psi. This pressure is about 390 times more than the pressure at sea level. This amount of pressure is equivalent to having a large elephant standing on every inch of your body. An alleged Titan submersible transcript is spreading across social media. This transcript has not been officially verified. Let's start from the moment Titan first encountered an alarm. We're noting an alarm from the RTM. Reducing velocity descent depth 3433. Understood, do you need to ascend? No change with thrust, the rate of descent is increasing. At 35, go in to release the ballast now, stand by. Yes, agree. Release the ballast. No improvement. Preparing to jettison the frame. Affirmative. Update when able. RTM indicator status. Frame jettison multiple attempts needed. But starting this end now. Multiple attempts. What is your status? RTM indicators. Depth. Update please when able. Crackling sound at app. Can you identify source or TM indicator's status? Negative. Or TM status. Trying to run diagnostics. Ascending now, but very slow. Sounds have subsided. Global RTM alert active all red. Understood. Any codes? Depth. Ascent rate. Updates when able, please. Slow ascent in progress. Quarter predicted. And clear why rate is small. No indicator. At 3,476. Aiming for the surface. We are talking it over with the engineer. Stand by. Depth and status please. What's the wattage on upwards thrust? Reading red on the power bus. I switched to be at 3,457 meters more sounds out. Understood. Continue ascent. Talking to Carlos about power bus situation right now. Stand by. We are activating recovery procedures. Carlos is requesting wattage output from bus B. Status update please. Velocity of ascent. We're not receiving you. Update please. Status and depth report. We need you to respond with status and depth. Carlos is requesting wattage update on thrusters. We are unable to read you. We are moving to recovery coordinates. Report if you read. Please respond if you're able. Those were the last communications between Titan and its supporting ship. The cause of the implosion is apparent. Titan suffered structural failure from the enormous pressure near the Titanic site. Most, if not all, submersibles and submarines operating at depth have pressure vessels made of a single metallic material with high yield strength. This is typically steel for relatively shallow depths of less than 980 feet, or titanium for deeper depths. A titanium or thick steel pressure vessel is usually a spherical shape that can withstand the crushing pressures you might expect at the depth at which the Titanic wreck lies. The Titan, however, was different. Its pressure vessel was made of a combination of titanium and composite carbon fiber. This is somewhat unusual from a structural engineering perspective since, in a deep diving context, titanium and carbon fiber are materials with vastly different properties. It was alleged that Rush was aware that the submersible could suffer catastrophic failure. Several individuals, including his own employees, had warned him about structural concerns. One industry group even wrote a letter criticizing the company's approach to safety and lack of oversight. One of those individuals was Rob McCallum, a former consultant to Oceangate. The following are the email correspondences between McCallum and Rush.
You are wanting to use a prototype unclass technology in a very hostile place as much as I appreciate entrepreneurship and innovation you are potentially putting an entire industry at risk. I have grown tired of industry players who try to use a safety argument to stop innovation and new entrants from entering their small existing market. Since Guillermo and I started OceanGate we have heard the baseless cries of you are going to kill someone way too often I take this as a serious personal insult. I think you are potentially placing yourself and your clients in a dangerous dynamic ironically in your race to Titanic you are mirroring that famous catch cry she is unsinkable having dived the Titanic and having stood in a coroner's court as a technical expert it would be remiss of me not bring this to your attention. I'd like to be remembered as an innovator. Um, I think it was General MacArthur said you're remembered for the rules you break. And, you know, I've broken some rules to make this. At some point, safety just is pure waste. I mean, if you just want to be safe, don't get out of bed. Don't get in your car. Don't do anything. I think Stockton was designing a mousetrap for billionaires. Expeditions to extreme places come with a considerable amount of risk. The question is, how much risk are you willing to take to visit such extreme places? What are your thoughts?